analyze ang data sa qualitative research. By the way, this is Professor Haggard, and if you are new to this channel, please do not forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated to my latest videos. Guys, today we will discuss about codes, categories, and so here we are on qualitative data analysis about codes, category, and themes. So bago tayo magsimula, gusto ko munang i-recall or review sa atin, especially to those who are still new sa paggawa ng research. Dapat alalahanin natin kung ano bang kaibahan ng quantitative at qualitative data analysis. To make it short, kapag quantitative, we are actually analyzing numbers. So take note, we are analyzing numbers. But if it comes to qualitative data analysis, we are interpreting the words. So, which is, of course, the basic skill na dapat meron ang isang qualitative researcher. So, para matutunan yun, let us embark to another lesson which would talk about codes and then category and themes. Again, for this lesson, we'll be focusing more on coding and then we'll show you uh, some examples about categorizing and creating the or formulating the themes. Okay, so let us start. So first, the data analysis should be composed of first, the first step would be transcribing, then coding, and then categorizing, and then formulating themes, and lastly would be the data verification. Transcribing ay tungkol lamang sa pagkapi o pagsusulat ng kung anong nasa recorder. Okay? So, we are going to deal again about coding and categorizing, formulating themes. So, data ver verification, by the way, uh, there are different methods kung paano i-verify yung data. Okay? So, yung data verification could be yung reread and reread yung mga codes. Okay? So, let us proceed. So, uh, before going on to coding, uh, let me show you the basic elements of qualitative data analysis. So, the basic Elements of qualitative data analysis would be about codes, categories, patterns, and themes. Kapag sinabi natin codes, we are actually identifying concepts from the collected raw data. Later on, mas maiintindahan nyo kung anong ibig sabihin yan as we go along yung mga examples about coding. So, categorizing would be about linking those codes na gina ginawa natin based na kung paano natin dinidefine yung mga statement from the interviews. That would be about categorizing. So, patterns, identifying circuited units. So, so, patterns, mahihirapan tayo mag-categorize kung wala siyempre mga patterns. Okay? And then, themes uh, would be creating a theme that represents similar patterns. So, yung themes uh, could be from the different categories. Yung ginagroup mo yung mga codes. Pagkatapos mo mag-group yung mga codes, meron ka ng categories and then you can create themes out of those categories. Okay? So, after that one, uh, let me show you a code which is good for us to remember. So any researcher who desires to become expert at doing qualitative analysis must learn to code well and easily. The quality of the research rests largely on the excellence of the coding. So yung researcher, especially when it comes to qualitative analysis, magiging expert ka lamang daw na qualitative researcher kung marunong kang mag-code. You are good in coding because yung kalidad ng research natin would be uh, would rely on kung gaano tayo kagaling sa pag-code. Okay, so let us come to the question, what is coding nga ba? So coding, this is how you define. So notice na ini-emphasize ko yung word na define because this is actually what coding is. Yung pagdi-define na natin sa mga information na ating ina-analyze that is coding. Okay, I hope that is very clear. So, coding is about defining what the data are. Okay? And the process of this coding includes identifying. So, ina identify natin yung concepts and we are going to find relationships between them later on as we go along, along with the data analysis process. So, after that one, I will show you the different coding concepts. Okay, so... Uh, consider uh, the different ways on how you can code also. So we have here descriptive coding. You, we also have process coding. We have in vivo coding, pattern coding, simultaneous coding. So it would be time consuming kung lahat niya na i-isa-isa yung ko. 
I will just show you uh, in descriptive coding and in favor coding samples of those things for you of course to have a more clear picture kung paano natin kung paano tayo magco-code. So let's just read some of the definition. For the descriptive coding summarizes the primary topic of the excerpt. So kung meron kang ina-analyze na statement, you are going to summarize. You are going to define that particular excerpt. And then process coding uh, this is the coding we're in a word or phrase you are going to put a word or phrase that captures the action so particularly yung nahanap sa statement of course are actions then in wave coding using the participants own language kung yung sa statement ng participants yung kakukuha ng ilalagay mo as code then pattern coding coding for patterns in the data and then simultaneous coding you have applying multiple codes to the same text so marami kang code na ilalagay to the same passage Okay, but that will be about coding concepts, briefly about coding concepts. So let me show you an example on, let me show you some examples on how you can code. So we are, we are going to deal about descriptive and in vivo coding, and we are going also to differentiate the two of them. So we have descriptive and in vivo coding. Hindi ko muna ipapakita saan dyan yung descriptive at saan dyan yung in vivo coding. So as I go along with the coding, so sana yung magets yung kung anong, saan dyan yung descriptive tsaka saan yung in favor coding but uh, nevertheless papakita ko naman kung saan dyan yung descriptive at saan yung in favor coding so I have here uh, the first passage actually I'm just going to use the same uh, statement and then we are going to create a code for that one so the code is our class section are full of students who habitually abuse their own classmates that must be punished let's just say yung interview question is about uh, what are your experiences as student? So, one of the statement that your participants stated was, our class section are full of students who habitually abuse their own classmates that must be punished. So, if you may notice, meron siyang number one. Okay. So, later on, then, uh, may hindihan niyo kung bakit kaya nilagyan siya ng numbers. You can actually use markers. Okay. But, uh, sempre kung pwede, pwede din namang numbers. Okay, so we can create code based on that one as we are going to understand kung anong ibig sabihin ng participants na yan as, as she was or she was talking about this topic. So, ilalagay ko bullying issues. And, do not worry kung sakasakaling iba yung susulat mong definition for that particular statement. Because anyway, you are the searcher at mas alam mo yung context while you were interviewing that particular participants. Kaya, you cannot consider na dahil sa iba yung pagkakaintindi mo, iba yung masusulat mo na code. So this is actually the code. Okay? This is how you code. Alright? So next, the same statement but different code. So lalagay natin student abuse. Okay? So, the first one ay yung descriptive coding. The second one is in vivo coding. Okay? Take time to see the difference. Bakit yung isa ay yung descriptive coding and then this one is the in vivo coding. Bakit nga ba? So let us focus in in vivo coding. In vivo coding kasi, if you could notice, yung student is from the statement. The student. Then the abuse, the word abuse is also in the statement. That is what is in vivo coding, diba? So in the previous slides, sinasabi na kapag in vivo coding, the words we're using actually were from the statement of the participants. And descriptive coding describe actually what the statement is talking about. So of course, the researcher will be the one to think about how to define that statement. So that is about descriptive and in vivo coding. Okay, so... I hope mayroon kayong natututu natututunan, although well, hindi pa tayo tapos. So let me show you an example. So let's do this. Okay, kaya natin to. So we are going to create, or we are going to code in this point, at this point. So this could be the question. Let's just say for an example, this is the interview question. What can you recall about your son's experiences in school during elementary? Okay, so... Sumagot yung nanay. Sabi ng nanay, My son, Barry, went through a really tough time about probably started the end of 5th grade and went into 6th grade. 
And then two, when he was growing up, young school, he was a people pleaser and his teachers loved him to death. Two boys in particular that he chose to try to emulate who then were not very good for him. They were very critical of him. They put him down all the time and he kind of just took that and really kind of internalized it. I think for a long time. In the time period, in the fifth grade, early sixth grade, they really just kind of shunned him altogether. So it's not worth a sinew because that. So it's a pinakamahirap na part ng pagkakon is paano mo iintindihin yung bawat statement. Okay? So as you can see, meron tayong ilalagay na number. Ang gamit kasi nitong mga number per sentences is for us to know na yung code natin, uh, for us to know kung aling code yung para sa para sa statement na to. So, kaya merong number. Let's say for the first sentence, I would define that one. I would put the code middle school struggle. Kasi nahihirapan siya while six grade. Okay, you can put their elementary uh, elementary year struggle. So it would be up to you. So meron siyang one because it represent the first sentence. So pareho sila. So madali mong malulocate kung anong code yung ginamit mo para dito. Okay? That is how we go. Then, second statement, when he was growing up young in school, he was a people pleaser, and his teachers loved him to death. It's talking about love, talking about teachers. So, pwede natin ilagay, teacher's favorite. Okay? And then, number three, two boys in particular that chose to try to emulate, uh, ginagaya, or emu emulate, yes. Two boys in particular that chose to try to emulate wouldn't, were not very good for him. So, ilalagay naman natin would be bad influence. Okay? Kasi, uh, ginagaya niya, tapos, na, napapasama tuloy siya. So, the word emulate means ginagaya. Okay? So, bad influence yung ilalagay natin. So, number four, they were very critical of him. They put him down all the time. They kind of just took that and really kind of internalized it. I think for a long time. So, ano kaya ilalagay natin code? So, you could think about it. So, for me, it would be about twin arms. Okay? And in the fifth statement, in the time period, in the fifth grade, early sixth grade, they really just kind of shunned him altogether. And so it's not work as he knew it was gone. So you go now then, would be about the lost boy. Okay. So by the way, these things that I actually put here as code, actually based then sa PDF file na I, I forgot uh, where I did so that this coding but then thank you sa taong yon although i do not know who was the person okay my fault okay so after that coding process that short coding process i think meron na kayong naiisip kung gaano kahirap pala yung qualitative data analysis because let's say ito is only for one interview question Let's just say you have 10 persons to interview and you have uh, 5 to 3 uh, interview questions that are all connected to just one such question. Siyempre, napakaraming code kang makukuha. But of course, that is the aim of qualitative uh, researcher for him to get as many codes as possible so that you can create, which lead, leads us, of course, to the next step. But before that, remember, the detail of codes completely depends on your search question. Tatandaan natin, yung pagko-code natin, dapat nasa, nasa isip din natin na yung mga code na ilalagay natin, of course, are all leading to our research question. Okay? We're connected to our research question. And what you're trying to get out from the data. So, tatandaan po natin. Yeah. So, let us go to categorizing. So, to categorize, napakasimple lang po ng categorizing. Kung marunong ka na mag-code, of course, yung categorizing, of course, would just come along. But to categorize is to arrange things in a systematic order. To make something part of a system that is a cited and saldanya. Okay? So to make something part of a system. So categorizing as science and you are going to classify things. So for this particular topic, this is about research. You are going to categorize yung mga code na ginawa natin. So for, for example, we have here codes. Code na kuha mo syempre sa mga statement. So, meron ka ng mga code. Tatlo lang yung ginawa ko, but for your work, it could be more than this. Okay, and then we have another code here, which I think are in a different category. And you have another 
group of codes that I also think na iba din yung category. So I would I will put in the first group ethnicity. It's about ethnicity. And then the next code is about language. And then the next code I would categorize that as uh, categorize that in the, into religion. So after categorizing of course, if you think all of this category could could be could could be could be grouped into one, you can consider that as your theme. Okay, so para sa akin, if it's about, for example, you're searching about describing a culture, for example, so this would talk about the personal identity or the identity of, of the culture. Okay, so that would be about coding. So I guess sana may, may natutunan na naman kayong bago. So this is again, Professor Haggard, and thank you very much for your time. But before that, let me leave you with another reminder. So remember, according to Rusman and Rallis, to differentiate differences of category and themes, think of a category as a word or a phrase describing some segment of your data that is explicit. Anong ibig sabihin ng segment? Uh, it's yung bahagi. When we say explicit, dapat malinaw daw. Y yun yung category. You need to think about a word or a phrase na nagde-describe, maglalarawan ng bahagi ng data in a way na malinaw. Or, kapag sinabi natin theme, it's about phrase or sentence that describe more subtle. Ano bang ibig sabihin subtle? Na kailangan tumpak, mas tumpak kesa dun sa category. Mas tacit. Ibig sabihin, mas napapahiwating ang dapat na definition sa statement ng in-interview natin. So, that is about theme. Okay? So, that would be all. This is, again, Professor Haggard and good day.